Welcome back everyone to BSG TV, the official YouTube page of the Bootstrapper's Guide. Today we're going to continue part two of importing bank transactions into Wave Accounting. So in our last episode, episode six, we talked about how to create a direct link between your bank account and Wave Accounting. This is really the preferred method of bringing in bank transactions because it's really hands off. There's not a lot of interaction on your part, and so it saves you a lot of time. But not all banks have a relationship with Wave yet, and so you may be in a situation where your bank doesn't allow a direct feed with Wave account. In addition, many banks that do allow the live feed don't allow the live feed for anything older than about 30 to 90 days. So if you want to bring in a lot of historical data, you know, last year's data, you're just switching to Wave, then you may not be able to get everything with your live feed. Going forward you will, but looking backwards you won't. Finally, there may be some of you that aren't really comfortable with having third-party software like Wave Accounting directly linked with your bank. The connections are really secure and, and a lot of accounting and financial software do this on a regular basis. But I know that everybody's not ready to make that leap yet. So if you're in that boat or you're in the situation where you're not able to get the data you want through a live feed, then today's episode will be really useful for you. Today we're going to look at an alternative method of bringing in bank data from your bank, which is downloading a bank statement from your online banking and then uploading that into Wave Accounting. You'll see when we're finished that the process and the, the end result of the process is essentially the same as the direct feed. It just adds an extra step in there, a little bit more involvement on your part, but you'll see that it's all still really quite simple to do. So to begin with, I'm not really going to show you how to download a bank statement from your bank accounts because it's really irrelevant. Every bank and every online banking website it's going to be a little different and going to store it in a different place. But the idea is you're looking for something along the lines of download or bank statement. If you're lost and you can't find it, um, view the rest of this video and then call your bank and let them know what you're trying to do. Let them know the type of file you're trying to download and they should be able to walk you through what you need to do. So in this example, I've already downloaded the bank statements for the month that I'm interested in from my bank online banking website and I'm ready to import that into Wave. So if we go over here to transactions, if you watched episode six, you'll remember transactions is the place where you can always find these add bank account and upload bank statement buttons. So I'm interested in uploading a bank statement. And you can see here on the upload a bank statement page, what types of files are accepted. My favorites are the top four. So you can do your Microsoft Money file. Um, most banks, I think the most popular ones you're going to see are going to be your QuickBooks and Quicken files. And then you've also got your Simply Accounting. So really, you're kind of looking for the QDO QFX files. If you can't find those, there's probably one of the other two available as well. Um, like I said, if you're stuck, call the bank, let them know I'm trying to download the QuickBooks or Quicken. Those are the ones that are most popular and most bankers will recognize readily. Um, let them know you're trying to download a file for that. Where can I find it? They should be able to walk you through it. But uh, in this example today, my bank has a relationship with Quicken. They have the QFX file, so that's what I'm going to be downloading. If none of those four are available, you do have the CSV. I'm just a little leery of the CSV file because a CSV is just comma delimited. It's just basically an Excel file and really can be formatted in a million different ways. And so I'm never sure if my bank format is what Wave is looking for. And, but with a QFX, a QDO, OFX, or ASO file, they're a standard file created by the manufacturers of the software. Every bank will have exactly the same file format. And I like that. I feel more confident about it. So those are the ones I tend to use. So we're going to use this QFX file. I'm going to go out and find my QFX file. And here it is, the export.qfx. So I'll select that. And then it wants to know which bank account to put it in. So I'm just going to pick my checking account. Um, you'll notice that when we did episode six, I never had to choose a bank account. And that's because I'm creating a direct link, a direct feed 
between Wave's accounts and my bank account. So Wave actually creates a checking account and a savings account for me when it's being imported. The bank statements do not. So if you don't have a checking or savings account set up yet, it's got the little plus button right there. You can create a, a new account right from this window, um, but you'll want to have that account built before you do the import. So here we've got our checking account already built. So let's go ahead and just click upload. And what's going to happen now, just like your direct feed, it's reading in those transactions. And as soon as it finishes reading in, then it's going to want to start pre-categorizing them. Now I specifically chose an account that had very few transactions so that it wouldn't take very long. So you really didn't see it trying to categorize. So this can take several minutes to run um, just as it's trying to pre-categorize everything. And then once you're finished, you can actually take a look at the transactions that we've imported. Um, we can scroll down here. You can see that everything's running in reverse chronological order. So if I wanted to back out all the way down to the new transactions I, cre I created, I'd have to scroll down to the bottom. And there's previous and next buttons way down at the bottom that uh, you, can, you can select to scroll through the pages or there's a jump to drop down, or in this case, drop up. So let's go to page 18 here and look at some of the transactions that we've got available to us. So in this case, um, you can see quick or wave accounting has done a pretty decent job of pre-categorizing a lot of my transactions. Um, it's recognized that several transactions are meals and entertainment just because it recognizes them coming from restaurants or grocery stores. It knows Walmart is an everything store, so it just throws it to office supplies. So it does a pretty decent job. And the more and more that you import and categorize yourself, the smarter Wave's going to get. It's going to know your habits and your tastes, and it's going to start categorizing more of these itself to the point where this review should not take you very long. So just go through it, recategorize anything that's miscategorized, categorize anything that's set at uncategorized. And when you're finished, um, you'll see that just like episode six, these transactions look pretty much the same. You really can't tell the difference between what was imported from a bank statement and what was imported directly. The only major difference is bank statements have an extra step. You just have to download and upload instead of click refresh. But other than that, it's pretty much the same process. The other thing that I really like that I think gives Wave five stars on this import process is um, duplicate imports. Several software that I've used previously, um, if you forget what you've uploaded, and you go into re-import something else, it's kind of like tough luck. It'll just re-import it all, all over again and you'll get duplicate transactions that you then have to go in one by one and delete them all and it can be a royal pain in the butt. But with Wave Accounting, I was really happy to see that they kind of figured that most entrepreneurs would be importing major bank statements and bank account transactions at three in the morning or after a hearty hangover and they would maybe not remember what they've imported or not. So let's go in and say we forgot. We didn't realize we'd already imported this. I'm going to import it again. Hit OK. And choose my checking account. Click Upload. And it starts uploading and stops right there and says, hey, I'm reading these transactions. They look really familiar. Are you really sure that you want to import these? Because I think you duplicated. And what I like is it's not going off the file name because I've imported this particular file name before. It's actually reading the transactions recognizing a duplicate where it exists and halting the process to warn me. And I really think that's, that's sharp. It's well thought through. Kudos to the Wave people. Um, I can just click no here and save myself, honestly, hours of work correcting a duplicate import. So um, that's really slick, really like that. And uh, that's really, importing with Wave Accounting. The only thing I might show you, up in the upper right hand corner, we've got this accounts link. And you can see in the accounts menu, you can connect to a bank account directly from here, as well as the transactions page, but it also has this integrations page. So let's go there. And you can see we've got this Utah Community Credit Union um, 
link that we created in episode six. So you can find your existing bank integrations here on that account page. And that's where you're going to want to look if you need to change your password or you change your security questions. You know, you obviously want to change it on your bank account, but once it's done there, you'll need to come here and update ways so it knows how to log in. You can also delete your existing integrations. You want to be careful about this because once you delete it, it's really hard to relink it again, especially that same bank account. Because as I mentioned before, Wave likes to create its own bank accounts when it does its links. So, that being said, you want to be careful about that. But if you've closed an account out, or uh, I think I had a lady write in the other day where her bank merged, and so now she has a new login for that bank account, this is where that's where you would want to go in and delete the old integrations. So to do that, you can just click delete. It's going to warn you. This can't be undone, like I said, and uh, just hit OK. Take it just a second to delete that link. And it doesn't delete the account or the transactions in the account. Uh, you can see, if we go into your chart of accounts, what it does is it renames it to something called disconnected. So it's called checking like it was, but it notes that it was disconnected on May 16th, 2013. You can if you want to go in and change the account description for that. But that's a default account description that you're given. Let's go back to your accounts really quick. One other thing that I wanted to show you on this integration page is that bank accounts are, the, are not the only thing Wave can link. So if you've got a PayPal account set up for your website or your Amazon account or uh, your eBay account, you can actually link PayPal to, is almost like a bank account and have it feeding in transactions for you as well. Same thing goes for Etsy for all of the artists out there that are creating your own stuff and putting it out on Etsy, uh, Etsy links into Wave now too. So that's another place where you can link. So um, kind of check this third party app section from time to time. They may be adding additional ones on in the future, but those are two really select ones that um, you can treat kind of like bank accounts and, and create a connection with as well. We may look at that in future episodes, but uh, really that's, that's linking your bank accounts through Wave Accounting, that's all there is to know to it. Uh, just like everything else in Wave, it's really simple, easy to use, pretty straightforward. If you've got any questions on it, you can find me on the Pro Advisor or on the uh, Wave Pro Network, and uh, look me up, give me a call, send me an email. Love to hear from you. Otherwise, look forward to our upcoming episodes.